This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on November the 14th, 2016. Today we do questions and answers. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. If it crashes, it makes a good blooper. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's that time again, folks. It's one o'clock, and we have new people. I'm Bob. Hey. This is James. And Brian and Brenda. Brian and Brenda. Okay, oh, Brenda. fine. Hi. That's Brenda. Oh, no, this is going to get confusing. <laughs> I'm out. It's too confusing. Okay, uh, James and I got together this morning for a couple of hours and heard our heads trying to come up with something to talk about today and we drew a blank. Well we thought of something but... Uh, That's for next time. week. Yeah, That's we because it's too complicated it's for next week. So with that in mind, questions? Questions. <laughs> okay, well, don't forget that free uh, computer. Oh yeah okay. We may as well get it on tape too for everybody. Uh, Fred? Yeah. Fred has uh, someone who has an old computer working well. Says it works, yeah. Windows XP? I don't know, he didn't say anything. He yeah, sent prob an email. Yeah, probably is, okay. Uh, has a computer working well. Uh, if it's Windows XP, please do not put it on the internet. Play games. Um, but uh, you can see Fred about it. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Fred it's has the email. Fred. I don't know nothing about it. Just yeah. put it on yeah. an email. He's well willing to give it away if somebody wants it. There you go. Desktop, it's old, but it works, he said. Okay, great. So, mm, what about DOS? <laughs> yeah, actually, a, an old DOS machine would be great. Yes? I have a printer that I will give away. Oh, well, maybe we now, can put it with the computer. If the, if the uh, ink wells are dry or not, I do not know. Okay. Uh, but I had bought one foolishly, probably. When I could have done the same thing on that one. It's, it, it's in the box. It's good. There's nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's something we can have a look at. And uh, maybe maybe if it's the right kind of printer, you can get cheap ink for it at 123ink.com. Can we just be an auctioner for like five seconds, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sold to the nearest bidder. Okay. So. The ink jets cost more than the printer. Exactly. Exactly. Except when you buy off-brand ink. And um, it depends on the printer you have. Um, if you can get off-brand ink for it, you can find uh, places that sell off-brand uh, ink online and just put in your printer model number. And if they have ink available for it, it will show you and how much it costs. Usually, a black and a, uh, a set of colors will cost you twenty dollars or less from uh, from online uh, ink. One two three ink.com. I think that's it. Yes, uh, we'll look at it after. Um, and uh, th if that's the one I'm thinking of, they're out of Montreal, so it's Canadian shipping, Canadian money, um, and uh, it's. But your printer has to support these off-brand inks. Now you can get them. Um, for Epson printers, some Lexmark printers, uh, old, um, even older HPs. Um, HP went to a system whereby they put a computer chip in the ink cartridge and when it's empty it says, I'm empty now, I will never work again. <laughs> so you can't refill them? Okay, but there are others out there that are refillable and are off-brand, they're, they're made in China. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like grabbing butters. Yeah. So these one two three dot com, they're not refilled ones. They're uh, uh, they are off brand new. Uh, okay. Let me just see here. Uh, one two three ink. Uh, one two three ink cartridges dot ca. Um, it just Google up one two three ink and you get this. Um, and so in this. Uh, in this line here, you can enter 
your, uh, your, your printer name and model number and uh, if it, ink is available for it, it, it will take you right to it. Uh, toner cartridges for, for old laser printers, uh, this is a great place for them. I have an old HP uh, laser printer that I use in my office. Um, I can get toner cartridges for it for about $35 a piece. They are 140 brand new. So, uh, if you can get ink for them, great, great, great. Check it out before you give your printer away. Yes? I found with them, I put in an order about 6 o'clock at night, and I was surprised the next morning, there it is. Yeah, there it is, comes in the mail. They ship overnight. Uh, the other place that you can get ink, if you know what you're looking for, if you have uh, an ink cartridge number, is you can get it from Amazon, usually for a lot cheaper than you will pay uh, going to Staples. So look up your ink cartridges on Amazon. If you have an account with them, you can uh, you can buy from Amazon. Um, so the other one you said was one two three ink dot. Just uh, it was it's dot ca uh, ink cartridges dot ca. That's what this is one two three ink cartridges dot ca. But if you just Google one two three ink you'll get this. It's the first one up. In Amazon there would be a shipping charge from the states? Um, usually um, if you have Amazon Prime there's no shipping and you can if they they are usually available uh, if they're um, um, if they're a common ink cartridge uh, out of the depot in Mississauga. Okay. So two-day shipping. Um, okay that was a great question. Any more questions? <laughs> Yes. The screen says Java update available. Do I do something or ignore it? All right, Java update. You have Windows 7? XP. Windows XP? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Okay. Um, we can we can do an update of Java. Uh, I for Windows XP, I don't know whether it would take but do I want it? For what? Um, really, I don't think so. I don't think you want it. Uh, are you playing games on your computer? No. Um, you're not going to game websites like Pogo or anything like that? <laughs> Watching cat videos on YouTube? Watching cat videos is okay. You don't need Jeff. No. Um, no um, I would say no. Okay. Just keep saying no to it. If you do go ahead it's going to do things to your computer besides load Java on it. Okay. It's it will probably change your your home page. I don't want it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> for the for other folks, it will probably change your home page. Uh, it may uh, also install um, a, a McAfee virus scanner, uh, not the full on McAfee, but the the sm little small free one. Uh, and that will bother you forever until you take it off. Um, so you really, anymore you don't need Java on a new computer. Yes? Ooh, Windows 10 and I get the same little thing, Java update available. But you're playing games. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I watch TV on YouTube, but okay. yes, I play games, but I click on it and it just goes away. Nothing happens. Is it doing anything? Um, maybe not. Yeah, I, I, I know about I that. All right, James, uh, tell, tell the folk what you know about Java and Windows 10. Well, when, and it's also the same for Windows 8 and 7. It will say update, uh, you'll hit yes, and then it will show up in where all these little tabs are. Sometimes it's like an arrow. No, nothing happens. And it's an orange box. Maybe no, it. absolutely nothing. Are you sure you're hitting yes? <laughs> no, there isn't a yes. It just says Windows update available. Click here. So I click on it and it just goes away. Nothing changes. Nothing happens. So I keep doing it and I'm wondering, you know, is anything happening somewhere that I don't know about, which is not unusual. <coughs> I have the Java thing, but I think it's a shortcut because when I go to features and programs, there's nothing in there for Java. Could be, yes, could be. Yeah. I think it must have got rid of it itself and just left the shortcut there. Windows 10 
is doing things like that. Yeah. Um, uh, I have found that uh, programs that Windows 10 doesn't like, it, it gets rid of them. It <laughs> takes them right out of uh, programs and features. They're gone. Um, so, uh, it's, yeah, who, exactly. Who needs it? Uh, if Windows 10 is making them go away, you don't need them. I do, though. Poco doesn't play without Java. Okay. Well, if you're clicking on the Java update, yeah. And you can still get into Pogo and play the games you want. Yes. Then it is updating. Then it is updating. <laughs> it's doing it in the background. Tip, okay. Typically, though, when you hit yes, like where all these small icons are, or in an arrow hiding the rest of them, it will show up like an orange <laughs> box with a cup of... Oh, perhaps I should open them up because I keep them closed. Yeah. Okay, um, a cup of Java that's in an orange back background. And if you click that, that's the updater, and it will update. Oh. So first it tells you, and then it opens up a different program, the updater. And I should do it though. Yeah. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's talk about uh, if you if you have if you're taking this further, uh, that you in fact are actually updating or upgrading um, Java. Um, there are a couple of things that you have to be careful of, and I've said this before, when you do these upgrades for Java and a few other little programs, go slowly, go carefully, read everything, okay? Look for little square boxes with check marks in them. Yeah. Uncheck those boxes because if you don't, Java will download stuff and install it on your computer besides the Java that you need, it will download other stuff and you'll have all of this stuff popping up on you. So for Java updates and for uh, Adobe Reader updates. Oh boy. And slash Adobe anything. Really. Yeah, Adobe anything really. Um, Flashback. Here again, go slow, read the stuff. Um, it, it may say to you something like, and I'm paraphrasing here, we have noticed that you are downloading and installing this great little program that we have. We also have all these other check, 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 great little programs that we think you might like. You don't like them. You won't want them. Uncheck them all. The, the only reason why they do that is because since they're free, they need to get money somehow. So it's essentially like every download they get, they get a dollar. <laughs> well, maybe not a dollar, a dime, but yeah, when you're but talking like, about a million a week, anyway. yeah. it turns into real money. <laughs> so that's that's that. Uh, yes, go ahead and, and uh, if, if your uh, Pogo games stop working, then you have to investigate Java further. But as long as they're working, then uh, Windows 10 is treating you right. Next, yes. Even malware bytes, I've noticed now um, when you click on malware to run it once a week or whatever, um, it has the little window that says, will you allow it to, of course, you have to say yes, yes. I allow it. But if you look away for a minute, a second window pops up. Will you allow us to make changes to your computer? You say no, and it will click to the program, and it will run malware bytes smoothly. But you got to watch it. This is yeah. the second window okay. that's popped up. Yeah. Um, I want you to read that carefully because what it may be doing is saying would you will you let us make changes to your computer in other words it's downloading the um, the, the updates of the virus definitions it has to do that before it starts okay, okay? so the virus definitions um, have to be installed that user account control dialog box that comes up says allow to do this. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that it is, uh, it, it only has to do with malware bytes. The other part of that is that malware bytes may want to do an update of its entire program. Go ahead and allow that, but stop and read the user account control dialog box carefully. It will say, I'm only about malware bytes. I'm not about anything else. Okay. Then you can go ahead and do it. Yes, sir. Something different. Okay. 
email addresses. Yes, sir. I have a difficult time putting more than one recipient on my emails. You know, when you go uh, CC, yeah. copy somebody, if I type in another person's name, I lose the original name that I want to send. Okay, to. Uh, I can't remember um, what email are you using? So, source. source uh, oh, you're using source cable. Okay, I don't think I have an active client here. Are, are you are you logging into the website to do that? I can't uh, remember. The source cable website, yeah. Yeah, okay. And your all your addresses are there. Are those correct? And uh, you say you start losing. Well, I don't lose. Uh, well, I, I don't lose the, the completely, but it disappears on the email message I want to send. Like, okay, so you, you, you put in the two address. Yes. And then a, a CC address and the two address goes away? No. Yes, that's correct. Okay. If you go back with the CC address filled in, can you go back and redo the, the two address without the CC address going away? <laughs> well, I don't bother doing that because I just forget. Don't send it. To, I'll do I'll two, two messages instead. Oh, okay. So you just two. Yeah, but I'd like, you know, maybe if I wanted to send it to yeah. five or six different. Well, I, I would try that first. Uh, put in all your CCs first. Okay, and then and then try the two, okay. and see if the CCs hold. Okay, I'll try that. Thank you, sir. I have that problem, so I just use BCC. Well, and then it works. Yeah. Well, that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have tried that as well, but I just seem oh, to be. Mine, it seems to drop off the addresses as you progress. Or digress. Give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. So when when you uh, when you do this, uh, Phil, you start the address and uh, you get a little drop down dialogue saying, "Oh, uh, is this the person? Is this the person? Is this the person?" No. Or you have to fill in the whole address yourself. Well, I have a contact list. Yeah. So you go. You say do a new email message. Yeah. You go to the contact list. You pick out the name you want. Yeah. As the as the prime recipient, and it comes up no problem. And then you want to send a CC or a BCC. Yeah. The prime disappears. Um, if you click on the CC beside the empty CC line, yeah. Does it bring up your address book? No. That's when I have to go to my contact list. Okay. And bring up a, a contact. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know what to tell you other than try CC first, oh, well. or as Brenda suggested, do blind car carbon copy. That way, the 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 initial recipient doesn't know who you've sent it to. Yeah, I'll try that. Which which is hey, that's kind of nice. Because there's no information on the source cable that gives you any help yeah. in that fashion. Yeah. There should be. Most computer programs have a help section. You would think so, wouldn't you? <laughs> well, the, what we're talking about is Rogers, and they are not very helpful. Okay. Re re remember, I, I told you that I was going. I do a rant every once in a while. Rogers is one of the things I rant about, but you're stuck with them, unless you want to use something else. I mean, I didn't mind Rogers. Uh, TV rental. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that was the only good part. But Rogers Telephones and Rogers Internet, don't get me started. Any other questions? You know, what well, you're yes. The thing about malware bytes, uh, PUPs, potentially unwanted programs. Yeah, pups. They come up as a threat. Uh, yeah. If you've been messing around in games and stuff. Yeah. Are, my question is, are they really a program, or is it basically a nuisance little gnat that's popped up, or what? Are they a program they're trying to Sometimes do? they are. Uh, and someti sometimes when, when you get a pup, it's, uh, if you look carefully at it, it, it will just uh, be an indication that there is, uh, the pup has gone away, but um, there is uh, uh, cruft left over in the, in the registry. So yeah. It, yeah, okay. So if if you understand that uh, uh, H uh, um, H key and stuff like that and local key, if you see those as a, as part of the entry for the pup, it's really just cruft in the registry that it's making go away. Okay. The malware bytes goes through the registry and finds all these things from unwanted <laughs> programs and tries to delete them. Usually, it does a good job. 
The mount, yeah, the malware that's all automatic in 10, automatically in Windows Defender doesn't catch a lot I, very much because it's malware that, that bites that catches. Yes, things. yeah, yeah. And, and um, Windows Defender um, is good for what it was originally written for, and that is viruses. And uh, as I've said so often, a virus is not malware. A virus is a virus, malware is a program. A virus, we'll just talk about it one more time so everybody knows, a virus is like catching a cold. You sneeze on somebody and you send the germs to them. Okay? Um, a, a computer virus is the same thing. You get it and it loads onto your computer but it looks around for other computers on your network. So if you have a desktop and a laptop and you fire up the laptop and, and the, the virus can see it through your home network, which it can do, it will jump over to there. You've sneezed on it. Okay? It's just that simple. When you go to a website and the virus is sitting there on the web page, waiting, it's just waiting for someone to come along so it can it can it sees that a new network has attached to the web page. Boom, off it goes. It's virus like activity. Malware is a program. It downloads, it either downloads in the background and you don't see it, or it downloads and it tricks you into loading it. Um, and uh, programs like Windows Defender don't know a lot about malware programs, they're there to fight the viruses. Uh, malware bytes and a few others um, do a good job at removing the malware. Um, there are other programs, uh, I must tell you, that um, I would class them as malware pro type programs. Uh, but um, for some reason or other, the industry has decided that they're not and so lets them invade you. And one of those is driver update. If you have driver update on your computer, um, you can go in and make it go away yourself by going into uh, programs and features and uninstalling it. But Malwarebytes usually does not see driver update as malware and remove it. Okay, there are a few of those. I don't know why they get away with that crapola, but they do. Another question. Yes? Networking. I keep hearing that word. Somebody once told me a long time ago, banks network and they're not attached to outside. That can't be, can it? And when I hook into my bank account, aren't I attached to the bank? You are. To a very specific side of the bank. There is, uh, the banks have uh, servers that are outward facing to you that hold all the information that you would need about your bank account and how to manipulate it, whether to add money, pay bills, uh, just see what's in there. They are outward facing to you. If you go to the bank and you sit down with a representative when they look at your bank account from inside the bank, they are not looking at that outward facing website. They are looking at it internally. Okay? They are, there, there is, um, there's two phrases here. The internet, which is what you use, and the intranet, which is what they use. The intranet does not face outwards. It faces inwards. So, all the things that they can do with your bank account is a lot more than you can do. Okay? They have buttons and check boxes and stuff and they can add things and delete stuff you would never dream of being able to do. But they can do it because they are on their internal network. They have two networks. The one that faces you, outward facing, and the one that they see all the time, inward facing. Also known as public and private. Well, no, not really. Public and private are still something quite different. Yes? 
can that be hacked as well as your internet? No. 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 Um, if that. Never. <laughs> If never that never. Ha not, not that they're going to admit to. Okay. All right. Um, they will admit to uh, hacks of the internet. Their outward facing servers. Those they will admit to and ask you to change your password and give you notification that things have been done and say if you lost money we're good for it. Stuff like that. If their intranet is hacked, they're not going to say a word. Because what the hacker can do from there is he can go to every account that the bank has and withdraw a penny to his account. Well, if there's four or five million accounts there and he's withdrawing a penny, first off, who's going to know? Who's going to care? But he got a million bucks. Okay? That's how that works. Mm -hmm. They're not going to admit to it. You, uh, you don't have a lot of faith in Windows Defender. I do. I recommend it. I, I, if you don't want to pay for a really good um, antivirus, and there are only about two. Be? No. Okay, the, 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 the best of the bunch is ESET. ESET. E S E T. ESET. Um, the other one, Trend You buy that in the stores? Um, no, you usually have to buy it online. And um, unless you are a really, really knowledgeable user, you are going to have the devil's own time installing ESET on your computers and your network. They, it is, it's really, really good, but it's really, really complicated. Okay. So if we get it, you have to put it on. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> next best. Uh, next best is probably Viper. I've actually never heard of Viper. Yeah, um, that's that's another one that is um, difficult to install. All of the ones that are easy to install that are consumer grade, they they are no, and you pay for them twenty bucks a year, sixty bucks a year, hundred bucks a year, whatever it is. They are no better than Windows Defender. I just personally hate AVG because of how many AVG clones there are that can yeah. screw you up. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what Windows, Windows Defender is. Okay, we'll talk about Windows Defender. You have Windows 7? Yes. Okay, in your control panel, um, you have Windows, oh. <laughs> Windows Defender, right there. He's Where pointed to the right place. So security and maintenance? No. Uh, Windows so Defender is right here. here. Okay? okay. It's, that's its name, Windows Defender. When you click on it, uh, it, it will, uh, if that's what's being used and it's up to date, it will show you this green box saying you're protected. Um, is that something you have to install yourself? No, it cu it uh, comes with Windows 7, it comes with Windows 8, 8.1, and 10. Um, however, however, if you have used uh, and are using another antivirus, okay. uh, even, you know, one of the free ones like AV AVG or something like that. No, I thought. Yeah. Windows Defender will turn itself off. Because um, there's like a, an unwritten rule that you can't run two antiviruses at the same time. They conflict with one another. And this is a free one. Did you say Yes, Windows free? Defender is free. Um, um, but you can't run two antiviruses at the same time. So Windows Defender will shut itself off. Now, if you uninstall the, the other antivirus you have, AVG, Avast, whatever it is, and, uh, and restart your computer, 
when Windows will know that you don't have an antivirus in and it will activate Windows Defender. Okay, so it never leaves you unprotected. Uh, I think there's a button you have to push on that page to turn it on. Um, in some instances, it might not turn on all by itself, yeah. but the computer will give you an indication yeah. that it did not come on. And if you click on that indication, it will take you to the place where it, in fact, turns on. Yeah, because I took trend out. Yeah. And the box came up, and there was something I had yeah. to click on. Yeah. In actual fact, um, in some instances, that's exactly what has to happen, but it's not every time. It, your, your computer will be helpful. It will try and tell you, you don't have an antivirus. Um, let's fix this. So Defender will pop up and say, you can turn me on or you can go to the internet and get something else. Yes? Can I get it on X, not XP? You know what I've got. I think I said XP, didn't I? Yeah. yeah. I can't have Windows Defender on it. No, no, it won't work. Okay, thank you. Avast is the only thing that will work in Windows XP. They're still letting you use it, but if you're using Windows XP and you're going on the internet, um, eek! Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bad thing to do. It really, it truly is. Unless you don't care about your computer. <laughs> like I had happened a couple weeks ago. When the guy wanted to sell me a new security program. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. That kind of stuff is going to happen. Oh my gosh. Now, uh, that's something that we're going to look at next week. So I'm not going to take any questions on it right now. We'll look at that next week. Um, okay. Hey, look, Java. Any more questions? Yeah, is things like XP and 10 the same the world over? My sisters in England were both on XP, and when they went to download 10, their provider told them they would do better to stay on XP. Those uh, lying toe rags. Okay, <laughs> I'll tell them that. <laughs> that was many grubbing boogers. Yeah, those lying toe rags. Now, uh, it's too late, they have to buy. Even in England? Yeah. It's after July the 29th, it's too late. You gotta buy. If you didn't get it for free, you're done. Problems with XP. Um, it's not protected now. It's, it's not protected very well. Uh, maybe in Europe and in Britain, uh, the internet service providers are doing a better job of protecting their outward facing networks that you use, which Rogers and Force all of them <laughs> would never deign to do. Um, when, uh, if any of you had Bell, uh, Bell would uh, had F Secure that you would download and install with your with your Bell internet. Okay, uh, a lot of European internet service providers provide that. They they use programs like F Secure because F Secure, I believe, is Swedish. Yeah, it's from really Sweden. Funny over there. Like yeah. One of them has the, the provider is in Spain and the other is in Italy. Yeah. That's the EU for you. <laughs> no, believe in that. Those <laughs> the don't have to. <laughs> yes, sir, you had a question. Where would you rate Kaspersky? Kaspersky is well up there. It would, would be my three or four pick. Um, here again, it's consumer grade, um, it's uh, a little easier to install than all of the rest of them. Uh, sometimes un uninstalling Kaspersky to upgrade uh, can be a huge pain in the bum. Um, and in a lot of cases, Norton, Kaspersky, uh, and, a, and a few others, you have to download a tool from their website to make every vestige of it go away, and then you can upgrade. So Also, Norton's just yeah. a... That, that's that's something that James and I would know about, but you would never guess it. <laughs> At that point. You just you you just oh well I'll uninstall the old, put the new one in, and then you fiddle with it for weeks figuring out why it won't work. <laughs> okay. Um, Question. Yeah. 
if I wanted to um, have you come into my home to look at an issue, a program, how do I get a hold of you? Well, do you have my email address? Well, I must have if I have your... If, if you're getting... Yeah, I am. If you're getting the videos, you have my email address, okay. so you can just uh, reply through that. All right. Yes? How come you two guys are so smart? <laughs> <laughs> Who says both of us are smart? I'm the only smart one here. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take special courses, or are you self-taught, or what? Pretty much self-taught. Self and then he taught I'm me. So, I'm self-taught, and I taught him. Um, and I started him at six, so he's been at Five. it for Five like six. Yeah. for like seventeen years. Okay, and I've been at it for just a few longer. Um, Can we do it now then? If we mucked about, mucked about. If you went back to the very beginning of. What computer started out to be back at Commodore Pet 64? Yeah, if if you st my my first computer was a Commodore. Mine was. Yeah, man, I wish I. Why didn't you keep the Commodore, man? I would love one. <laughs> Get me that for Christmas. No. Oh. They cost more <laughs> than a brand new one out of uh, out of Staples. Um, if you if you were to go back and study up from that point forward. Um, in about six years you could catch up. Well, then you could teach the class. <laughs> <laughs> then you could teach the class. Um, there, uh, how do the kids today um, get into the, the internet, uh, the uh, information technology business? They pretty much have to go to community college or university to do it. Uh, and they have to become computer scientists. There are computer scientists that, uh, uh, computer science degrees that take two years. There's the regular university degree that takes four. Um, and after that, um, they get a job with a big company uh, pulling cable through their buildings for two years. Well, they learn the company's mm -hmm. systems. Also, so. the sad thing about learning, uh, going to college is learning about computers. Is it's a two-year course, and every two years computers change. I just have to take the course again. My generation hesitates. Well, when, just go right out of it. Yeah. When, when I said when I said go back, what I'm really saying is go back to the oldest technology that was out there. It's yeah, really it's, simple to understand. Like DOS. Yeah, like DOS. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can think of a simple one. And even simpler, um, there, were, there was languages uh, for these old computers called BASIC. Yeah. Okay, uh, there were languages for them that were nothing but numbers called assembly language. Okay, uh, I learned BASIC and assembly language when they first uh, when I first got a computer, so I could I could take an old uh, Commodore, and I could make it run as fast as this brand new three thousand dollar computer. Okay, because all it was doing was crunching numbers. That's what they do best. <laughs> Zeros and ones. Zeros and ones. That's what they do best. And if you get it too, you did something wrong. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's not go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> but that's how that works. Thanks for the question. <laughs> I'm the smartest okay. one. Though. Any other? Any other? <laughs> Don't start. <laughs> um, more questions. More questions. Oh, we're dry. <laughs> Perfect. Who wants to watch a movie? No, we're not going to watch movies. Uh, see if you can stump James. I want to know about malware. Is there some kind of a program that you use to test your computer frequently, or you just? Yes, there is. Wow. Um, we're going to open up a Google here. Um, Let's see if it's going to load. Ta-da! Yeah, you have more right. magic talk. Yes, and what you're going to look for, is uh, I'll spell it slowly, is M-A-L-W-A-R-E-B-Y-T-E-S. Did I get that? Yeah. Okay. You look for that, and 
malware bites free antivirus or anti malware internet security software. Right there. We'll take you to the page. And crushes malware free download. Okay, so you can download this and install it. It's really, really, really easy. You can't mess it up. And every every week you can run that and it will go in into your computer and find the stuff that it doesn't like that shouldn't be there. And it will remove it for you. Once a week is good. Uh, now, what may happen, uh, and I have to... Uh, I have to give this as a caveat to malware bytes. What may happen is that um, for the first 30 days, um, it will have installed the premium package. And that means that uh, it will launch when Windows launches and it will run as Windows runs. So if you get something right that instant, Malwarebytes will understand it and know it and remove it for 30 days. After the 30 days, you're on your own, you make it run manually. Okay? But there is no sense in buying um, premium malware bytes. Not really. Um, you, you are no further ahead. If something gets into your computer and takes it over, in most cases, it's able to turn malware bytes off until you can get into your computer uh, in safe mode and use it that way. How do you, how do you, I guess I don't know the terminology. If I want to run it to do a check, what do I hit? What, what, how do I well, when, when you, uh, I don't think <clears throat> I have malware bytes on this computer. I think I took it off. I'll have to see. Um, nope. Home page comes up and you scan it. Yeah. It says scan. You're at date scan. Yeah. Click on the icon. Yeah. On the icon. yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, after you've downloaded Malwarebytes, it will put an icon on your desktop called Malwarebytes, uh -huh. and you just double click on that and follow the instructions. Yeah. I would recommend a quick scan because a full scan could take anywhere between a day and two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or the recommended scan takes, you know, anywhere from half an hour to 40 minutes. Yes. The recommended scan. And you can work with your computer while it's doing that. It, it, uh, it will work in the background. That's the nice thing about Malwarebytes. Is if you want to sit down and do something, Malwarebytes will get out of your way. Where most of the others won't. It's, it will tell you, hey, I'm taking over. Get, out of yeah. Get away from me. I'm not going to let you do anything until I'm done. And that's when you tell it to eat a Snickers. Yeah. <laughs> um, but malware bites will get out of your way, let you do the thing you want to do, like check your mail or something like that, rather than hang the computer up or crash it. So why would you have that if you have an antivirus? Uh, as I said before, an antivirus and uh, does not know very much about malware. What's malware? And malware is a program. Um, a program, uh, I will give you, give you an example. Um, uh, what would be a good example of a uh, malware? For malware program? Yeah. The AVG I mentioned. Mm. The fake AVG. <laughs> the aforementioned AVG. Uh, yeah, there... <laughs> Uh, I can't just get one right off the top of my head. Well, I think I this was, uh, was Booking.com when I read when I went and read all my threats. Yeah. Booking.com. Well, I don't deal with Booking.com. Why would somebody be trying to put a thing with about Booking.com on there? Okay, here's why, and this sort of answers your question too. Do, do you need both? Then you need yeah. an antivirus and and, and malware and malware bytes. But this is going to answer both of your questions. Um. How did you get Booking.com? Oh, it came with the computer as an app, I think. Yeah. Yes. You might have also gotten it when you were uh, when you went to some website that uh, in searching for hotels. 
just some search of some kind. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But okay, a related search like searching for a hotel room. Yeah. Okay. Um, Booking.com may have downloaded and installed in the background. It's just a little tiny program. Okay. Okay. Small. Um, but uh, because uh, I'm going to class all of these as malware because they came and ensconced themselves on your computer uninvited. They're not invited in. They just did it. Yeah. Um, and they make changes to your computer like they may take over your home page. Okay? So instead of Google coming up when you hit your browser, uh, booking.com comes up or some other um, travel search website. Okay? So it makes changes and it's their uninvited. That's malware. I just, That's I just, what malware does. I just thought of an example. Yes? I'm suddenly getting emails from dozens of sources that I have no previous contact with. Um, don't, don't open those for one. I'm not opening them. Uh, those are my page. The, they, those emails. are, yeah. uh, I would classify them as viruses as they're coming through email. Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. But like, I, I get, I get uh, emails from Steven Seagal, of all people. <laughs> and I'm just like, man, Steven Seagal. But, eh. <laughs> or, Russian girls want to meet you. <laughs> I'd rather meet Steven Seagal for one. Okay, so what do I do to get rid of that? There is, there is nothing, uh, other than delete them, there is nothing else that you can do because your email address has been sold to someone. It was captured on the internet by some fishing expert and a, you, along with a million others, were sold for about a thousand dollars. So I just changed it then? Well, you can if you want to, but then you lose contact with all of your friends. Because you have to then, before you do that, tell them, here's my new email address. And because your new email address is sitting out there on an email, <laughs> okay, that guy that, that stole your email address in the first place, he's going to get the next one. <laughs> okay? There's not a lot you can do. Just there ignore isn't. them and say, oh, not this shit again. <laughs> I'd rather meet Steven Seagal now, personally. Now, uh, we're going to talk about this next week, but uh, I'll give you a heads up on it now. I have uh, several email addresses that I use, so does James. And one of them is just for logging into websites that I might want to uh, log into and have a look around. They want my email address. I give them that one. Mine are mainly because I forgot. I never go there. No. There's probably 20, 30, 40,000 emails. Doesn't that slow your slow down your computer? No, no, no. This is on the web. Oh, it's on the oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so I give them a Gmail address, mm -hmm. okay, a bogus Gmail address. Okay. And uh, there's probably 30, 40,000 of them sitting out there in the inbox. That guy's right? not answering. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't care. No. Because I didn't give them. My, my real user email address, the one I talk to you folks from. Type in any? Anything? No. No, you can't. It, it checks. So that's why I say you go and open an account. A Yahoo email address is great. Okay, so you go and open a Yahoo email account uh, and use that Yahoo account to log into websites. If they want an email address, give them that. One. Don't give them your Hotmail address. Why I don't go to a lot of sites because they ain't getting yeah. yeah, they want that. Yeah. And when that e and when that address gets sold, uh, they're not bothering you. They're bothering the email address that. Uh, and the best thing you can do with two email addresses is you can have a fun conversation with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could happen. <laughs> That can happen. <laughs> you other me, make sure you do this. <laughs> you good answers, Jane? No. <laughs> and Russian girls want to meet him. 
So does Steven Seagal. I'm yeah. gonna have to beat him more though. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yes. you know like further on that, you know, where you get these unwanted emails and then you can unsubscribe? Does that work? Or are they Um here's what unsubscribe does. From reputable websites. Um yes, it probably works. But from disreputable websites, what it does is tell the spammer, oh, this is a good active email address <laughs> because you've sent him back a message. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Well, yeah, um, like if you get newsletters from like Amazon, Amazon newsletters, like if you unsubscribe from them, they'll say, okay, we won't send you any more Amazon newsletters. But that's still just because they stopped you, um, stopped sending it, you're. Excuse me. <laughs> That's pretty loud. <laughs> Deaf person. I hear nothing but ringing. In any case, um, like Amazon will stop it, stop sending you things, but they can already have not sold, but like people could already got your email, and you would still be getting spam from anyone else and. Best not to answer those because then they'll be like, oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah you, this no. is an active no. person. No, there's, there's one other thing about email um, that you should be aware of. Um, if you get um, email from spammer uh, websites or from spammers saying Russian girls want to meet you um, in the subject line or something like that, Please don't open them just to see what it is. <laughs> There's a reason for it. And and as I said, the unsubscribe button mm -hmm. is one way that the spammer knows that he has an active email address because um, somebody touched the button. The other way they do it is that they will uh, embed a picture in the email mm. that you've opened and the picture will be downloaded from the spammer's own email server. Now that picture will be a single pixel, a single pixel, white, a single white pixel. And if you look at your email, um, you'll not see that there's a picture of a single white pixel there because your email's white. Mm -hmm. Okay? But that picture downloaded from the spammer's email server to your, to your email address, now the spammer knows he has an active email address because somebody clicked on the email. Okay? Because it downloaded the picture to it. So if you get emails from, uh, from bothersome things, um, like uh, pharmacies, <laughs> those kinds of pharmacies, <laughs> and uh, you open the email, a single white pixel picture downloaded with it. So now the spammer knows that he has an active email address. Boy, will you get more. <laughs> okay. So that's how that's done as well. Also, uh, with those tricky emails, you can even get messages from yourself. Uh -huh. He's had from, from himself. It was like, hey, this person wants to talk yeah. to you. And I don't know like, whether I, I don't think I've got one in here. No, I usually try and get rid of them every morning. <laughs> but... Uh, <coughs> I, I get uh, messages in my spam folder from me. That's even more hilarious. <laughs> yeah. I, the, who are they from? They're from me. But when I look at the email address carefully, um, it uh, is my name only, my email name only slightly different. Let me be a dot in the middle of it. B O dot B W I L L I A. Or instead of an O, it's a zero. Or, um, That's more or, common. 
uh, a more common is a zero after the end of it or something like that. Um, and my Gmail doesn't know not to give it to me. <laughs> so it just yeah. gives it to me. All right, so much for email. We're gonna go through email you know, a lot more. You, you have, a, okay, you could delete it. And then you have a, a thing for spam. Can you put it in there? Um, what you can do, um, now modern email clients do this and uh, webmail clients do this. Um, they have a junk folder. Yeah. Okay. If you put the mail, if you move the mail from the inbox to the junk folder, and you've done that to two or three or four or five of them, after that, they will not go to the, the inbox anymore. They'll go straight to the junk folder. Okay. So you're, you're not even going to see them in your inbox. You have to go in there and empty the junk folder. But uh, you don't even see them anymore if you do that. Okay, especially in webmail, especially from Gmail, Yahoo, uh, Outlook, all of those. If you move that that junk mail, and you you're getting it, um, you're getting new messages um, from the same outfit every day. If you for four or five days in a row, if you just move those into junk folder, don't delete them. Move them into junk and then delete them. Um, the uh, the email. Uh, package will get to know. Oh, he's going to throw it in junk anyway. Let's go. Just go straight to junk. I don't know if local the local source does that. Uh, your email package may do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I yeah. Thunderbird it. Mail, I believe, does it. Um, yeah, Thunderbird does. I have yeah. It now, so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's a way to use. It. Yes. I got a thing from the email. Okay, I, I did an advertisement from Michaels, right? Right. Michaels, okay, and. Uh, I have it under my email address, and when it comes up, it says, hello, Renee, or it'll say, hello, Daniel. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, when I hover anywhere, I'd like to open anything, or like some say, yeah. it'll come up the name, the email name that I've got in there. That's them. <laughs> if it's sending to your email name, yes, that's them. But yet on the it's, little it's, page, yeah, it it's their problem. Renee or somebody yeah, else. It's, it's their problem. Yes. The, the junk mail thing can work the other way as well. I once, it said junk mail too. So I opened it and this was when I was dealing with a lawyer and they put the lawyer's letter in my junk mail. Yeah. If you move it into inbox and it happens a couple of times, you keep moving it, eventually yeah. it will know from this address, put it in the inbox. Did it start doing that? Yes, it did eventually. Okay. How come you haven't done that for me? I have tried and tried and tried. Um, I James has to send me once a month money. For putting up with me. I want money from James once a month. So he sends me money from his bank account. From TD you can do that. Well, most bank accounts you can do that. You can put in a person's email address and send them money. Mine always goes from him. And from uh, even from myself, when if I have to move money to a bank account from another bank, um, it goes to deleted items. Oh, gee. And then so and then he yells at me. It goes to the. Trash. You haven't sent me money. I did. <laughs> yeah. So he has to send me a text message, uh, different from the email, saying that did it? <laughs> did it already. But an email from him goes to the inbox. But an email from the bank from him. <laughs> goes to trash. I see how I don't is. know why. I, I see tried how it and tried and tried to make it stop doing that. No luck. So did you block me or something? No. Is it monopoly money? <laughs> no. It's, I mean it is Canadian money. It's Canadian money and it's real and I want it. <laughs> no I, I, no Canadian money is monopoly money. You can go to America give them monopoly money and be like oh it's Canadian money. Perfect. Okay. One last question quickly, and um, we'll call it a day. Anybody? No, I have a question. <laughs> That's it. I, can't I have a question. Thank you. I like that pair. 
Why am I smarter than you? <laughs> Stop. Stop that. Okay, it is two o'clock, folk. Right. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, if you would like to uh, give your email address to Fred, he will give it to me. And um, we can take it from there if you'd like to come back. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.